Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Atomic Cast with Tom and Bert. Hi. Hello. Um, Stephen Denby off of any heroics was meant to be here, but then he bailed on us because he's too tired after not winning an event to scrub. Um, but yeah, just so you know, everyone tell him to man up. No, uh, that that is a distinct lack of heroics. Yeah, that's, that's distinct really lack of heroics. No heroics. Um, <laughs> But anyway, this is episode 35 of the Atomic Cast. Uh, we are going to do our second kind of big MESBG meta watch. Um, so we did one earlier in the year, uh, in April, funnily enough. Or it might have been May, but we actually recorded it. But still, um, just having a look at what is going on, who is actually winning events and stuff between April and August. So um, to add a bit of context... Uh, if you didn't know, Games Workshop do articles for 40k and Age of Sigma, uh, where they post them up on their page and they, they do a little like 30 minute video with Adam Troke and uh, another chappy whose name I can never remember, but you know, Adam Troke's there. Um, what they do is they take a look at the meta, they take a look at the win percentages. I think they draw most of their data from Best Coast Pairings, which is where um, most of the 40k things are posted. And what they aim to have is all of the factions in the entire 40k achieving a win percentage between 45 and 55 percent and that gives you balance now anyone who's ever played a game of 40k will tell you that that doesn't happen um i think this month's one the there's one faction on 70 percent and one down at 30 and things like that um which is glorious when you consider that some of these have had you know hundreds of thousands of games and have a 70 percent win rate on them um just majestic um but yes they then say you know anything that's above that needs some form of nurse anything below that needs a buff and then when the next kind of round or round of faqs and erratas come around that's normally what happens so they release kind of like balanced data slates where they they put out kind of uh, points changes or little tweaks to rules and things, a bit like you know, hmm. saying, Ah, oh, the legendary legion now has to have this many dudes, or oh, your best save is now this. Um, just to kind of try and bring everything back in line a little bit. So, with that kind of scene set, we're going to take a look at Middle Earth SPG, and I'd like to know, first of all, from everyone in the comments, pause right now, go down to the comments. What is the single most winning percentages faction in Middle Earth right now? And also, what is the worst? Give me your guesses. Good. And Bert, what's your guess? What's the best faction in Middle Earth right now? Uh, okay. In the wider, in, uh, there are different factors that come into this. Um, there are so certain quickly, factions. Let's go. What's the um, best? Uh, <laughs> Arnor, super good. Mordor, uh, Mordor, Serpent Horde, super good. Uh, Dragon Emperor, Assault and Helm's Deep. Um, that'll do it. Cool. Uh, the, Worst the, 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 ones. Um, Army of the Dead, um, the Shire. Um, oh god, Variags of Khan. Um, pure Isengard. A lot, a, a, a lot, a lot of a lot of the time. Ooh, <laughs> Um, That's how wrong. <laughs> right. Uh, so, uh, sources for this information. I have been on longshanks.org. We all know that I like Longshanks. It's a lovely, lovely website. Um, we, I, I would encourage everyone to to use it as a TO, uh, unless you've got a super fancy rules pack. Makes it really easy. It also records stats for everybody, which is glorious. So, uh, what we have done is... I filtered it between April and August because that's when the last kind of we blasted this, and then August is right up until when the FAQ is done. As soon as the FAQ is out, bam, no more things. We've got about two thousand rated games that's played in competitive tournaments. There are a million un unrated games, but I only care about the rated ones. So about two thousand games for that period, and then on the right hand side of the screen, you will see the points levels those games are played at. Uh, I do believe the Hampshire GT put them all down as 100 instead of the points that they were actually at <laughs> because it's a GBH had 100 events, so he put 100 points in the event thing. That's I why there's a load of 100-point events on. 
I was wondering where we're missing out on the 100 point SBG meta. I do how... kind of throw queries in it about like how have we ended up with one single 475 point competitive game. Um, but you know, let's not dwell too hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the long story shit is we've had a big chunk at 500, a big chunk at 600, 650, and then another chunk at you know, 7, 750, 800. Um, so about 2,000 games, the vast majority of them are above 600 points yep. This month, this month, in this time period. So bear that into your, your brains when we look at this. Um, a small number at 200 points, which was the event in uh, Lincoln. Lincoln, yep. Yeah, where, but it had like seven rounds or something silly. So it was like bam, 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 bam. Um, so there'll be lots of data from that, which would be quite fun. Hmm. But yeah. Um, there we go. What, what was the point value for Hampton GT? Was it seven? No, six fifty, seven hundred. About that, yeah. About that, so we can log, we can log the, a lot of these games in at that level as well. Yeah, cool. we can expect to see this is this is going to be a, a meta between six hundred and eight hundred points, basically. Cool. Uh, is what I'm expecting to see. Which, let's be honest, if you're, well, Jay has said it several times, they think of the game as existing at around seven hundred points when they design things for the game. That's where they think of the game as existing. Um, somewhere in that region. Yeah. So when you start doing like Into the Western 450, there are obviously things that are really good at those points but aren't necessarily good at 750 and so on. Mm. Uh, so um, I'll pop this back over here out of the way. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. Uh, so this here, I know it looks like a large amount of data or, well, just a large amount of nuss. Uh, this is the Army of Lake Town ally faction if i just wanted to have a quick look at uh before we dived into it too much <laughs> um because army lake town has obviously just been hit with a a, a chunky little nerf uh to their allies because they wanted to stop people just allying them in so clearly they were too good so army of lake town and forest company uh only had four games i assume this is one person at one tournament had an 88 percent win rate so uh that's three wins and, and a, a draw, draw. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Army of Lake Town and Rivendell had 10 games and an 80% win rate. So um yeah, that's that's all right. <laughs> um that's that's pretty good. Army of Lake Town and Frandall Souls had 16 games with a 78% win rate. Um, which is also that's that's quite good. Um Lake Town White Council, six games, 67%. Lake Town Erebor Reclaimed, 14 games, 64% win rate. Lake Town, Radagast Alliance, 10 games, 60%. Uh, I'm going to ignore that one. And Lake Town, Lothlorien, 16 games, 56% win rate. So actually, your conventional Lake Town, Galadriel, Gwai here combo appears to have been the weakest of the allied factions, but that may be because it was more popular and used more often. I don't know. It seems like, yeah, the... Uh... The army of Lake Town, Rivendell. So they're lo lobbying in Kirdan and Glorfindel. Eight, that's eight, eight, eight wins out of ten games is really, really, really quite solid. The Halls of Thrandial one, I, I didn't, I didn't see that much, but uh, that's just Legolas, I imagine. That is just, that is just Legolas being lobbed in as well. Okay, I, I would imagine that is just Legolas. Yeah, that's, I think that's but, fairly common. I think, but one, 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 one of the things I think that is just true in and of itself. We're looking at these are the range of allies taken with Army of Lake Town. Um, we, I, I love that we can do alliances and you can come up with you can come up with some different combinations of things. I don't think you'll see that. I, if there's any other list that can just have so much other stuff just whacked into it. Um, you 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 won't see even something like, even something like Minas Tirith. You won't you won't see this many different alliances making a make an appearance in a, within a three month period. Um, so then that's part of the issue that you have you have so many different options for the for, for the allies. I think that's why the FAQ makes a nice little change. The other thing, that, well, the other like counterpoint to your points, which I do agree with. Is that something like a minister doesn't actually need as much throwing into it because it's a large faction in and of itself. Okay. Yeah. Whereas Army of Lake Town doesn't actually have an awful lot going for itself as a standalone faction. So which it shouldn't do because of the, the role it takes in the films and the books. Mm -hmm. Um but 
because it's such a small faction on its own, it's actually much harder to utilize it on its own, you might say. Uh, so it's naturally just thrown in with other stuff. However, it is really good at the one thing it does. So, um, like, if you want a block of 350 points for 40 lads, there you guys. Or they were, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. Um, the second slide I've got for you is the same thing again, but with the Serpent Horde. Um, so there's a few in here where it's like Serpent Horde and Minas Tirith. That's because that's a, uh, um, I assume, a good and evil event. Um, but it's just not. But the biggest, most obvious thing to me is that there are some huge numbers of games being played with some of these factions. Um, so Mordor and Harrod together has 93 games, which um, is more than the entire of Lake Town. It's both standalone and allied in over this time period. Just so. Uh, that has a 70% win rate over 93 games. Uh, then you've got the Serpent Horde and Farhad, which has 65 games with 60%. Serpent Horde and Corsairs, 26 games, 58%. And Serpent Horde and Eastlings, two games, 25 And Serpent Horde, Grand Army of the South, which is Grand Army of the South, four games, 25%. Um, so it obviously drops off at the bottom there, but the big one is Serpent Horde Mordor, which is the kind of big boogeyman at the moment. 93 games, 70% win rate. So we're seeing we're seeing lower win rates than we were for the Lake Town alliances, but I think these are over some far more substantial samples. Um, You're only seeing lower win rates than for Rippendale and Halls of Frandor. Like White Council, Arrow Reclaimed, were all worse. Oh yeah, but but I'm I'm saying that the other the other alliances the other 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 win rates are far more in line with like yes. normal things. There, there, there are some with there are some with low, with with lower win rates. Um, this doesn't seem too bad. If I think it's something to bear bear in mind that we I think we also know some of the pilots of like Mord, Mordor Serpent Horde, um, and given that even with their success factored in, it's 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 only at seventy percent. Um, like if you're, if thirty percent of games are being lost, it's not the it's not the silliest thing in the absolute world, and the sixty percent win rate for certain horde far around. I'm abs- I'm absolutely fine with that. Uh, I think th- th- this is it's clearly a very it's a, a very themey, very fun list that is very very the glass glass hammery. It looks fantastic on the tabletop, um, and that means you're gonna, you're gonna, you're going to get a wider array of players. Wanting to put that army on the tabletop, I was um, I was mildly curious going forward because the next slide we've got is all the factions that had forty games or more over this time period. I didn't include anything that had like ten games because that seemed a bit a little bit pointless because that's basically just one person. It's like the Arnor train, right? It's just one bloke running Arnor. <laughs> you go, Jake. Um, <laughs> and just winning with it. Is it because Arnold's good or is it because Jake's good? Who knows? Probably both. Um probably sometimes uses them too, I think that, but yeah. Um what I did include is Serpent Horde Mordor and Serpent Horde Farharad into the equation because they've mm-hmm. got the enough games. Um so yeah, thought that would be interesting to look at. So here we have the win percentages uh for all the factions that we had. Uh, I'd have condensed the scale at the bottom there, so it does start at 30, not zero, so that we got a bit more of a nice spread. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you'll be interested to note that Mordor and Harrod has the best win percentage of any faction in the game across this time <laughs> period. <laughs> this does <laughs> not come as a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, it, like you said, it is being used heavily by at the top end of the GBHL currently. Um, those people are doing well with it. So there's a little bit of chicken and egg. Are they doing well with the list? So therefore, it's good. Is the um is the list good? So they're doing well with it. Probably a bit of both. Um, it's a, it's 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 one of those lists. I think that you you need that balance of both. Uh, you a a, a good a good player cannot make complete trash get to these win the these win rates just due to lack of tools. So there are, there are definitely more. There are passive effects of the of the Mordor Harad list that are just good. You don't need to do anything about the fact that everything is defense six. That that is good. That makes it hard to kill. 
um no, no matter what way you swing it that is a passive effect of a of a strong of a strong alliance um and there's a big and the big sort of lamp banner is a more passive effect however when you when you get people who are going to put the witch king in the right place and cast the right spell on the right target at the right time and make sure the Sudan banner is always in the exact right place. Um, that's where that's where these things stack. So they it provides all the opportunities for a good player to do well. And then to cap it off, we have very good players maximizing that opportunity. Uh, we are going to talk in more depth about the various factions as we go through. Um, but this was more of just a whole overview. I regret not putting the actual percentages next to the bars. Um but for anyone who's kind of listening and not not seeing this, um, we've got kind of Mordor and Harrod at the top with 70. Army of Lake Town also has 70, but Mordor and Harrod has more games than Army of Lake Town did. So that's how I tie broke that. Uh, then the Survivors of Lake Town are third. Corsairs are last fourth. And then at 60, you've got the Serpent Horde, the Bayonings, and um, I don't know, the Corsairs are there as well, aren't they? Uh, Serpent Horde, Bayonings, I can't even read my own thing. Serpent Horde, Bayonings, and Corsairs are all at 60. Yeah? No? Yeah. Yeah. Serpent Horde, Bionings, Harrod, Oh, no, and Harrod and Farhad. Because, of course, those are just above 60. Serpent Horde, Bionings, and Harrod and Farhad all at 60. Then just below them is Assault on Helm's Deep, Assault on the Florian, and the Dragon Emperor, all on the same exact win percentage as well. Um, Then Angmar, then you into Riders of Fair, then Goblin Town, Erebor Reclaimed, Mordor, Azov's Hunters, La Florian, Defenders of Helm's Deep, Halls of Thranduil. Uh, then we're dropping down like below that kind of 55, so into what Games Workshop called Balanced in other games, uh, which is where you get Farharad, Pits of Gorgoldor, Iron Hills, Moria, that's the um, bad guys Moria. Uh, Longshanks refers to good guys Moria as Khazad-dum. Uh, the Shire, Canned. Uh, and then you start to drop down below the kind of like 45 into it. Okay, so that's what refers to as like bad. With um, things like Ministeria of Rohan, Rangers, Azog's Legion, Fangorn, Eastlings, Rangers of Mirkwood, Army of Thraw, Numenor, Fellowship, Isengard, Return of the King, Baradur, Fiefdoms, and the Kingdom of Khazadum, chilling out at about a 35% win rate. Less. That's your boys. <laughs> Um, so if anyone sure. wants to be a Chad and win a GBHL 100, proving that they're really good at the game and it's not just a list, Kingdom with Khazad Doom, Fiefdoms, Pure Isengard. I, I I think I actually am taking Pure Isengard to a, to a 90 soon. So and like, easier boys to, to yeah. try out. See what happens. Um, if you're taking Mordor Harrod, yeah, just, just, you're just, just taking the easy win list, lads. It's fine. No one cares. I think the the other point to make about this is can we also just appreciate quite how many lists are in that fifty five to forty five percent bracket? Well, uh, it's great that you mentioned that, but what a lovely segue! <laughs> um, to the to the other way round. I've started at the top, <laughs> um, with just a little bit too spicy. So, um, yeah. This is where it's like this is quite a big list. Um my my takeaway uh from this large kind of win percent faction graph is that I don't exactly know 40k, but I genuinely think there's more factions to balance with Middle Earth than there is with 40k. There's more kind of combinations of things you can do and there's more stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um because this is obviously not even all of them, this is just the ones that hit 40 games. What I love is the variety in the game. We all love that. Um, you, I, I love the fact that you can play kind of five games against the same army in a row, and you play every single game would be different because of the way the scenarios work. Um, the same, but the other way around, you could play the same scenario five times row against five different armies, and it always plays differently. You know, domination against bears is entirely different prospect to domination against Goblin Town, um, and so on and so forth. Um, I think you could expand the parameters a little bit from fifty-five to. 60 percent or so um just to kind of include Agreed. things that are, are reasonable um but that's just me no. feel free to make your own mind up uh so this is the a little bit too spicy uh situation uh so we've got mortal harrod at the top 93 games 70 percent win rate we've talked about it a little bit already 
the most common iteration of this you'll see lots of times is Black Numenorians at the front, Miranid Orcs at the back, Witch King, Suladan, and then someone else in the middle. That someone else in the middle is often either a second caster, so the Mouth of Sauron or the Shadow Lord, or um, something like a Shaggers or a Goroth or a Guritz or something like some kind of other punchy hero um, that could do the killing for you, but the um, your two other heroes are kind of supporty, so you either get another punchy or another supporty hero in there, essentially, is what's going on. Um, why that's good is that you get fight four, strength four, defense six, and terror all across the front line. Terror with with hob with hobbing of evil, with hobbing of evil, and a six inch banner bubble from Suladan. And um, massive numbers. I think the, 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 this one of the things as well, like the, it's almost all these lists are almost always above the divide by 20 rule as well. Yes. Uh, they'll, they'll get like 43, 44 models in at 750, and you go, like, that is that is just really chunky. It's so many. D6 lads to try and kill with some really, really good heroes around. Um, it's just good. Uh, the next up is Army of Lake Town. Um, it's been discussed to death. It's really, really good at low points on its own um, or with foreign. It's really, really good at high points with other things thrown into it because you can basically go pick and choose of the best models in the entire good faction um, like your Legolas, like Galadriel, like Saruman the Good from the White Council, lob them all into a list together and go, yeah, it'll be all right. And um, yeah, it does. Uh, 350 points for 42 models with uh, a six inch banner, a free might hero who can call free heroics on a four up for some reason because Bard cucked him, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and Alfred, who can just give you more might and more resources for fun, like it, it's it's a silly little core. Um, but yes, now they've taken away allies. It'll be interesting to see what happens to it. Um, well, they haven't taken away allies completely. You can still ally with survivors of Lake Town. No, not survivors. Uh, Foreign's company, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can take survivors of Lake Town to get access to many of the same things, but uh, with other stuff going on. Uh, survivors of Lake Town. Much less gains, only 41. 65% uh, win rate. I think that's mainly due to the fact that people are running Army Lake Town instead. Um, and Survivors tends to have this reputation of only being good at high points. Um, I'll be interested to see what happens now that Army of Lake Town is... I can't, be... I can't recall that many events where it's not where it's knocked out the park or podiums. Survivors. We, yeah, we've 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 done two or three, but it's not like it's. Sorry, I completely lost you. No, say the I I I don't remember seeing the survivors list consistently finishing really 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 high in events. Um, so well, I guess it's... it well that so that 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 win rate it must be just consistently finishing in the top third in these like seven hundred to eight hundred point events. This is what it is: a sixty five percent win yeah. rate. It's a consistent four and two. It's not a consistent win um so it's like army of lake town where was the last time you actually saw army of lake town win an event preston but yeah which was near the start of the year yeah it's been months they don't actually because people well, people just immediately adapted to being able to kill it with strength for brands and stuff um but yeah it's 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 not actually winning events that consistently um survivors of lake town's the same doesn't win them, but it's just consistently up there. Um, also, a lot, uh, I assume a large chunk of these games were um, Grattan with his survivors mm -hmm. and their more acclaimed combination because uh, they play a lot of games that feature on long shanks like the Hampshire GT and stuff like that. Uh, and he's run them consistently through them. Uh, Corsairs. Nice to see them back on the list. Yeah, that's cool. 51 games and a 61% win rate. I think it's like the thing of like, it, although that makes sense sort of the what the, the fourth highest the fourth highest winningest faction. We repeat that 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 that's sixty one percent. That's le less than four and two on average. That's what that's that's something like three three wins a draw and two losses in a, in a six game tournament. Uh, yeah, and that's a, and that's the fourth highest winningest faction. Again, full credits to that being the fourth most broken faction in the game. That that uh. that is its win result. 
there is a little bit to be said for the fact that these kind of around the 40, 50 game mark guys are um, probably only been taken by a few people who know what they're doing with them. So I would expect that to skew the data a little bit. Um, you know, it does. it's not the kind of thing that's been taken up en masse. Um, but Corsairs, lots of crossbows, lots of um, fight for... They're only strength three, but they're fight four with lots of crossbows and just lots and lots and lots of them. Also, lots of throwing weapons. Um, that's like that one of their big selling points is the throwing weapons, um, which can come in really handy when you're playing against things like Goblin Town, Assault and Lothlorien, Lake Town, where there's lots and lots of numbers. It's all fairly squishy, and like you're you're hitting fifty percent of the time and killing one third of the time. So you're killing about one in six times you charge something and you are charging a lot. So um, you should be able to kill a few turn, a few things every movement phase, which killing stuff in the movement phase is just stupendous. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that's my, my take on Corsairs. Kind of fell fell out a little bit, felt that it became unpopular for a while, but uh, well, not unpopular, just, just less sexy than some of the other armies, but it was one of those perennial top five factions for a long time. I'm a little bit sad I sold mine. I used to have a lot of fun with them, but, you know, oh well. I also had lots of Black Numenorians in there that I sold with them, <laughs> and I regret that even more. Um, right, Serpent Horde. 254 games. Obviously, 93 of them are with Harrod, and 75 of them are with Farharad. Um, so you're probably actually seeing about 90 games of pure Serpent Horde, and there are a few other allies running in there as well. Um, but all in all, a 60% win rate over 254 games. That is crazy popular. <laughs> and when you think about it, how often do you actually think you play Harrod? I I played it back in February in, in a, on my league game against Dewey, and that's actually it. I yeah. I, I, I don't play against this faction. So I think this is just all the Mordor. I think this is all the Mordor and Harrod players getting together in clubs and playing rated games against each other. Well, that's what we're saying. The Mordor Harrod's uh, a third of this essentially, but um, you know, there's there's so much that's just yeah. Um, I mean, I've used it a fair bit. Uh, Sirens has used it quite a bit. It's one of those kind of six hundred and below little superstar little lists. Um, I really enjoy it because you get so sort of the cheapest cavalry in a game. Which is re-rolling ones with plus one to wounds, very very dangerous. You've got Suladan, who is one of the most cost-effective models in the game. There's no doubt about it. He's a hundred odd points for a six-inch banner, a fight five, um, three might hero with re-roll ones naturally on his poison sword. Um, he is just a delight. Um. And that hundred points probably includes the cost of his horsey as well. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, and that's the banner that is an actual banner as well. For anyone who didn't know. Um, so yeah, are they just and then their their troops are just really cheap, efficient fight for. If you run the pure and you run the uh the uh Suladan and betrayer and a friend, often Raza. Uh, Raza's really good, by the way. People forget about him. He he um, he, he just he just fills that role of can just call moves. Um, can just go move surprisingly killy. Um, and surprise, he's fight six now. Yes. Um, yes. Which, and as we know, fight six can mess up some heroes. So yeah, no, he's 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 a nice little toy. Um, they just have some really cheap, efficient models. It's it's just delightful. Uh, bears, a hundred and fifty-seven games with bears. Just a very easily accessible faction, really. Um. And well, it's it's tell you what it has been. It's been one of those armies that you've seen people who think they are pretty decent and want to win some games just go, you know what, I'll buy bears, I'll win some games. And I think that sixty percent number is just beautifully indicative. You will you will win some games. There are games where not being able to kill the bears matters just yes. enough where an unkillable bear is really, really, really good. I've seen people take bears with 50 points down purely so they didn't have to bring Bayonings because the Bayonings are a liability and they just wanted to bring bears. It's the the bears are really good. 
they will win you many games, but there are some games that are nigh on unwinnable with Bears. And if you don't know what you're doing on some of them, you will just lose. Um, but there are ways to do it if you if you like barging around and things like that, and just kind of prolonging games and making sure you're in the right spot, and then just barging people off objectives and all of that jazz. You can you can win those objective games if you really try. Um, but you have to be really really careful with how you do it. Um, Harrod and Farhad's, yeah, I'm just going to move on. It's, yep. it's I've talked about Harrod enough. Baharad just adds things like camels, which are really good, and back on the menu now, which is nice. Um, the two assaults, Helms Deep, 70 games, 59% win rate. So only just below Bears, Harrod, that kind of stuff. I think in the in for the last three months, I think we've seen enough that just that just handles it really well. Uh, there's there's plenty of blinding light floating around that it struggles against. There's plenty of Shadow Lord floating around that it struggles against. Um and then there's just there were just better there were, there's just better battle lines around. Um so it's still it's still going to do well, but it's not like for the last three months there there hasn't been a lot that counters it. And you 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 now need to rely on actually using the tools that you have very, very, very well. Um, because there is just there is enough out there that is a bad matchup for you where you need to start engaging the brain a little bit. Um, which is why we're not seeing this completely busted leader hitting 75% plus win rate. Um, then we have the assault on Loth, where you talk about things that can counter it quite nicely. Um, I've put it in the wrong way around because Assault on Loth's got 143 games and oh no, yeah, and the same win percent, so that should be a top of it. Sorry, friends. Um, actually, so should a Dragon Emperor. Um, they should both be on top of each other, on top of Helm's Deep, but still. 143 games, 59% win rate. Um, same, same as the Bears, I think. it's It will just win you some games, but if you and if you know what you're doing with it, it'll win you lots of games. If you don't really know what you're doing with it, it'll win you some games. Um, that's about all I've got on it. We've talked it's, about it so many it's, times. It's it's squidgy. Uh, if, you, if you misplay with it, you can end up with like 14 models dying in combat in a turn. Uh, if your opponent, if your opponent has a vague clue what they're doing against it, it's a, it's a lot of defense four, defense five models that are actually quite poor in combat. Um, so it it's not it's not forgiving, and this win this win rate shows. Um, Dragon Emperor, eighty seven games, fifty nine percent win rate. My only surprise here is that it's only eighty seven games. I think that's going to go up substantially. There is still there's still a degree of the Dragon Emperor model is very very expensive. Yes. Um, I it, still look at anyone with a Dragon Emperor faction as a little bit of a, oh, pay to win. Um, and I know that's very rich, <laughs> considering I have an army of Lake Town, but look closer, because a chunk of that is 3D printed. Um, uh, but yeah, the uh, dra- Dragon Emperor, yes. I, t- I, just, I just hate it. <laughs> I hate the model. <laughs> I hate it. I, I I hate how many rules rules questions there are about it, and it's it's just so passive. It's so unbelievably passive, um, and there's so many just little things like you about not being able to knock it prone and having the in the way to shoot it as well. And in fact, it has six defense six things carrying it. Um, and the, the, the little uh, things uh, like the uh, the ents where they do their special um, thing where they pick up the dragon <laughs> emperor off the chair. Smack everyone else in combat with them, with him, and then carefully put him back on the chair. <laughs> it's just, just like let us break him up with that. Maybe that'll make it good. <laughs> you know, just a- any any monster, just any monster is able to just pick him up, just to bash him in the face and knock him off. I the chair. like to think if I'm a troll and I pick up a, a a dude in a shiny golden bit of armor and I ping him at the chair, you're gonna fall <laughs> off it. Like, <laughs> I don't know how good your construction is in the actually, middle of the desert. Actually, rules question: If you hurl the dragon emperor, does oh, he you stay hurl, on his you chair? Skim him. You, you skim, skim it like him. a puck, hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think it says you can't hurl it or something on it. Okay, know. fine. But yeah, um, yeah, um, we've tried he, that. He no. he is fairly glued to his chair. Oh, it's yeah. It would be way more fun if he wasn't as glued to his chair because then you could just like have have your way with him 
I think it's I, I think it's more than the play, playing against it, even at decent points levels. If you're up against just Emperor Rotabi Brawgear, it's not that. No, haven't you heard? It's... Emperor Double Dragon Knight is the meta. Uh, I uh, no, I heard Ali King is good at the game. The meta is um, Emperor Emperor Rotabi Brawgear. Came second today with someone else using it as well. Um, did, did, did actually? Yeah, <laughs> I've been at work all day. Um, um so Angmar. <laughs> won 183 games. That's a lot. Angmar, what a treat. Uh, 58% win rate. Angmar, another one like the Corsairs that has just never gone away. Um, turns out making people not be able to use their heroes is good for you. Um, also, like six point fight free Terra D5 models with piercing up to strength four or bashes and things like that. It's just, the utility you can get out of an Angmar Orc is insane. Um, they are one of the best point-for-point point warrior games, warrior models in the game is an Angmar Orc, with Terra and Harbinger, and like, and I'll die on that hill. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they also have the ability to chuck Warg Riders in there, like, you know, Wargs and Warg Riders for the extra movement. You've got your Spectres, which are just, we love a Spectre. Um and yeah, Witch King, just a fantastic utility piece. Oh and and, uh, and Gulivar. Yeah, he's okay. Um some people like it with just Birdie, you know? They like I so I played against Birdie for the first time a, a, a while back, and it wasn't the thing like I was thinking, oh thank god I'm not, I'm not up against Gulivar. And I was, I was going, oh, okay, so this is now a three might, three wound, fight six, hero monster thing this is also quite hard to deal with yes with with with, with everything else going on as well if you can flash king kill birder good job if you can't he's going to cause you all kinds of issues basically um but yeah especially if you start letting him get into like transfixed or paralyzed heroes he will just murder them um he has a is it hand and a half pick um, he, he, he's is he burly? Oh, I can't remember. I'm in too deep. Um, it's too it's too late. I'm in too deep. I peaked. I've gone too hard. The people are shouting at me. Um, Angmar, where is it? I've got an Angmar list. Safety. I've got an Angmar list. Behold, we thirty. We're Birder in it. Splendid. Birder is a pick. Just a pick. Just a pick. Just pick, okay, yeah. So he, so pick. he, so he just piercing a strike up to, but actually going going from strength six to strength seven, like so many really tough heroes are that defense seven mark. Yeah, um, your or defense five, defense five troops. Yeah, they they get murdered. But it's, it, it's the like, uh, if you get to transfix LSR and and, and you struck up, uh, your LSRs, your Thedans, all the all this kind of all this kind of thing. Um, um yeah. Um yeah. Wizards, yeah. Wizards D five most of the time. Yeah. Um still than D five. But yeah. Um uh Riders of Fair then. What a lot of people are thinking is the counter to the Mordor Harrod um kind of situation we've got going on where you don't care too much about the terror. You can go in and, and hit them with strength four knockdowns and break through that front line pretty hard. Um if you if if you hit if you hit that line hard, get some combats off, and uh, which which is gonna happen at some point. But if you then manage to win the heroic move roll off as well the following turn, you you've just you've just killed you you will have broken the army. And there is so little that that that, that list can do against on the way back. It, it, it's it's lovely to see that kind of list. Not that Nua is ever bad, but to see it back as a real meta contender is beautiful. Because it is just, it, it is one of the it is just cool. It's arguably the most iconic moment of the entire movie trilogy. I and... don't know if it's just the fact that I'm still scarred from the like couple of months after. Gondor at War first came out. See, I missed. I wasn't really a part of things on that scene. Oh, I my know, sweet summer child, <laughs> <laughs> turning up to events and going, "Oh, what have you got? Oh, is it Faden, Aomer, Dernhelm, Beowine, 
gambling and like free royal guard. Sweet, cool. Oh, what you all gonna call correct combats? Oh, wait, you're all gonna use all of your might. Oh, look, you've all got it all back again. Sick. That's fair. I'm oh, because just... oh, oh, Ga- gambling's banner was still a point of might back all to of every them, model. Yeah. <laughs> like, just imagine Riders of Fae end with all the heroes getting might back. Just, ugh. Ugh. Um, but no, it is cool. I like seeing it on the table. I like seeing it back. Um, yes, it could it could rise some more. The rise of Rohan will be lovely. Uh, Goblin Town, 72 games, 57%. Um, if you don't know what you're doing Goblin Town, it will win you games. It will not win you all the games because you will just lose some of the games. Um, if you really know what you're doing with it, you can win all the games sometimes. Um, the rise of the veto pool thing for tournaments we've been using it a lot in casual games the rise of it in tournaments has led to a rise in goblin town i believe um which is quite nice bring it back bring sexy back i love it i don't want to linger too much on it because it's just it's there's not too much to say really is it just a million models have a nice time and deep striking a unique mechanic ish because now hobbits have it but you know hobbits and goblin town the best manoeuvrable factions in the game. It's just silly. It's just silly. <laughs> uh, Erebor reclaimed at 101 games, 56 percent win rate. I, I I think this is a this is 100 out of 101 games of just Thorin. <laughs> no, there was only like five games with Thorin and Lake Town together. Um, it would be just it would be just something with with Thorin. Bear in mind, um, this probably encompasses the um. Thorin and Goat, Dane on Goat, the uh, Dane on Pig, just a wall of Iron Hills lists. Because that is Erebor reclaimed. Okay. I'm still so, I'm still so fine with that. I mean, I, I think your your point about the 60 plus percent mark being a bit silly. 56% is just stuff that's yeah. quite good, really. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard to kill. You have some fun heroes who are also hard to kill. It's fight four, strength four. The seven, seven, se- seven times eight, yeah, it's good. It's a yeah. big scary heroes. If you can't deal with them, we'll kill you. It's good. Next, Mordor, three hundred games, fifty six point one rate. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good it's all the time, and it's used fairly effectively some of the time. Occasionally, it's like, occasionally now, just because you see Mordor doing well, just take a moment to flick through the Mordor. Section of the army book, or going to lonely night. It's so just, big! Look at it, it's so big. It's, it's so, so in, big. It's so intimidatingly big. Like factions of other players look at it and go, "I'm not that big," and they wish they could be. Yes, Mordor, the John Peacock of the dressing rooms. <laughs> I just wish I was that big. Just swinging its huge army list around in front of the rest of us. <sighs> just wrong. Uh, as of Hunters, 116 games, 56 point win rate. It's really good at low points. It's not that good at high points. Done. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it was it up to like 600. Jake, Jake also maintains that at like 600 points, there is no better list in the game. Okay. Um, and I think and yeah, I I, I I've played against a few times. I can see it. 600 it's... and below, it is right up there. Especially yeah. if you drop in some mercs or something along those lines. The fight, they're, they're only fight three, but two attack strength for Hunter Orcs. Everyone's like, ah, oh, there's no spears. Um, cool. Don't, don't, you don't care. need spears because what you do is you go, Whoa! and then, then you're all around them, and then pain happens. And when you kill them, there are millions more. <laughs> they just keep coming back. And then they've got 50% bows, lad. What was that all about? <laughs> it's just not necessary. It's so unnecessary. Right. <laughs> that was a bit of a, a word slog. Uh, it's okay. It turns out, from memory, um, like 50% of the factions are in this category. Um, what's interesting here is we've got five good factions and um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven evil factions. So there was a little debate on the GBHL Facebook page or something the other day about like is good or evil better. You got five it's... good factions and eleven evil ones up near the top. 
Shaw, Lake Town, uh, and um, Bears are good at certain points, windows, and things, but they're good at certain points, windows, and things. And like, bear in mind that two of those five yeah. have just been hit with the Nerf Hammer. Yes. And you look at, you know, Harrod at 254 games, Assault and Loth at 143, uh, Angmar at 183, um, Mordor at 300. Like, these numbers are huge. And you're seeing, like, 40s and 50s from the good armies. Uh, obviously, Bears at 150, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, the the representative thing is just, you go to an event, you're going to play Mordor a couple of times now. Like, it's just, just how it is. Right. Should we roll Next. on through to the Let's stuff in the middle? Um, these are the good eggs. We like you. You are happy, dependable lists in theory. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe bad. That's the aim here. Uh, we probably won't dwell too much on it. Um, just because, yeah, um, they're pretty middle of the road. So you've got Loth Lorien at 162 games with a 54% win rate. Um, it counters some things in the meta quite well with its fight five, um, blinding light, defensive magic kind of situations. Um, works really nicely as an ally to some lists with legless and things. Um, and just adding in Gladriel, but it's, yeah, it's 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 just that in a meta where a lot of defense six lists be quite good, it just can't crack through those shield walls. At the rate that it needs to, um, yes. the, the the hero the heroes are fun. The heroes are great, and you can get like really you can get really solid numbers. But if they're but if when they win fights, you're they're killing you on fives and multiple dice, and you're killing them on sixes, it's very 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 difficult. Because also you're, you're you're never super high on might either. Um, it, it's just that yeah that that strength three effective cap is just a bit sad. The defenders of Helm's Deep. 49 games and 54% win rate. This is entirely your fault. Um, uh, y- y- yeah. Um, my fault that it's this high or this low. <laughs> low. Everyone else has been winning. <laughs> everyone, else is, everyone else is much better than me. Um, I still think it, it can't, it can't have, it can't have the fight four and defense six line. Um, I like, I, I like that you can have warriors with axes that, that they have strength four, but like the Royal Guard being defense six, unfortunately you can't. You can't be you can't be that killy and that defensive at the same time, and the lack of maneuverability. But it's it's still a ton of fun, especially like eight hundred when you can get Legolas and Gimli in there as well. Balls but of no. Frandu, one hundred and forty games, fifty four points. Again, I expect a decent chunk of this is just Legolas being wanged into random lists. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, Similar thing. Frangel's really cool, but it's it's a, it's a strength. Strength three, strength three cap. You do get the plus one to wound. Um, but it it can net. It's when you're using a load of points on Frangel and Legolas and Palace Guard are expensive. You just can't quite hit the numbers that you need to to compete really I think hard. That's my my biggest issue with it is that the the things that are good in it are just really expensive. Um, I mean the cap are, are the captains like eighty points or something silly. Yes, they but they are. Like fight seven captains, if they're oh, they're, 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 they're they're fight seven defense seven captains. It's hilarious, but they still they they have they have two points of might and no strike. Yeah. <laughs> um, Farhad's without serpent horde friends. Uh, one hundred eleven games and fifty three percent win rate. Bear in mind, this has probably got the serpent horde friends factored into it too, so it probably drops out of this on its own. Um. It's so glass hammery. If you if if you lose, even the heroes of what defense five, they can get shot easily. The army's defense four. Um, so if it hits you, it will kill you. Fantastic. Um, but if you if you win the move off against it and surround it, it's go, it's go, it's going to fa- it's just going to fold. I I love it so much as a faction, and I'm I'm sad I've lost my hips the status of it now being back in production like regularly. Because there was a little part of me which just loved rolling out the camels when they were, you know, twenty five pound a camel. Which would be like, yeah, boys, here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, oh, yeah, I I've got a soft spot for them. Like, so yeah, they just, they they will murder you, but then just die in response. 
uh, really unforgiving if you don't really know what you're doing with them. Also, this green with Serpent Horde and Serpent Horde just makes it so much better. Um, like instantly better by having that six banner. I converted a Farharad banner bearer up. I've never put him on a table. You don't ever. Say why? Because <laughs> uh, I wanted it's very, to. Very, very, very nice of you, but why? Um, because I can. Yeah. Uh, the Pits of Doggle Door. Only forty-three games. Fifty-two percent win rate. This we had we had this last time as well. I keep thinking it's good. <laughs> Is it does does it keep getting played at like eight hundred points where it just slightly runs out of steam? Um because they're like 500, 550. This list is awesome. At 550, this list is really, really good. Or is it or it or is this a case of it's a cool legion with some cool rules that newer players can pick up and then it's not quite as good as you want it to be? Because in the hands of a skilled player, this list is absolutely brutal. I think it's one of those that um people look at and go, Yeah, I'll give that a go. And you you can't really just do that. You know, people are like, Yeah, I'll I'll play with buffed up Azog. He'll be good. But it's just just very unforgiving. Um basically. Mm. The next the next two we can kind of well well, two two of the next three we can kind of put in the same in the same boat. The Iron Hills and Shire, um, even Moray to a certain extent, where glaring but glaring strength and essentially here we've got some glaring strength and glaring weaknesses where movement is a big one, and it is really hard to do well in a huge number of the scenarios without without extensive movement. See, I would um, put Moria in that bracket because. Moria has ways to deal with it much better than Iron Hills and the Shire do. Um, I just think the even on scenarios where you think the Shire would win through things like domination, if you don't know what you're doing, the Hobbits are just gonna die. <laughs> um, <laughs> like they they just die so hard. Um, if you put them in the wrong places and you don't use your heroes and your buff bubbles and things effectively. All of those hobbits die. If you buff them up nicely and you get to like fight four sheriffs or whatever it is, where like uh, they're just si- silly, um, they're great. They're incredible. If you don't do that, it's trash. Um, the is what I would put them in is all three of these things are the kind of thing where I think a new person would go, that looks cool. I'm gonna give it a go. You know, I've seen the films. I've seen. Dane and his Iron Hills dwarfs. You go, I want to use Dane. Cool. Iron Hills. Crack on. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg, but you go for it. Um, and, you know, I've, I we know quite a few people locally who, who've done things like Iron Hills because it's cool dwarf lists. Uh, same with Moria. They want to play with dragons and barrel rocks and stuff. You crack on, Sunshine. You get it. You go for it. They're just not very good. <laughs> the, the models, <laughs> the um a lot of players using them are potentially newer to the game and the scene. Mm-hmm. Um Moria can be really, really effective, like really good. Um if you use the but you have to use the right bits of it. And there are certain like units in Moria that you just you just don't want to use. They're just not particularly good. If someone can take it, can someone please win a GBH 100 with a Dweller in the Dark in their army list? <laughs> please, it make me so happy. There was one we, uh, like a 90s one we went to where there was like a barrel and five Dwellers kicking around. <laughs> and I was like, I, I love it. I love it. But it's so shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, things like Bat Swarms, Cave Drakes, um, Wagon Marauders, really good models, Groblog, like they're, they're they're really good models in Moria. Um, you can get some really really good stuff. They just, if you use it wrong, it'll die. If you have to walk across the board into hunt, even hunter orc shooting, it'll die. Like, 
I'll... If you want, if you want to see how good Moria can be, though, Moria is so good that it can lose three quarters of its army and still win games. Check out the Atomic Cards channel for more. Um, yes, and the same kind of thing goes to Iron Heels, I guess. It's um, it's really good at being a, a static battle line. It's really bad at everything else. Um, <laughs> the Shire is really good at having loads of dudes everywhere. It's really bad at everything else. But they can be everywhere. Um, they're just... Yeah. Uh, canned. Down here near the bottom. Uh, no, in the middle somewhere, sorry. Um, yeah, it's all right, isn't it? <laughs> it, it, it? Again, on the on the crack back, it just melts. Uh, no, no spears. Um... Banners, despite everything having a banner, not having a banner is kind of weird and funky. Um, it, it it's just it's just a bit melty. Um, and you you want to go into chariots and things, and it's good fun. It's cool. Um, it's it, it's again, it's one of these it's one of these swing lists. When it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it sucks. Yes. Um, Minister, it's really good. We promise. Minas Tirith is actually really, really good. But this one I am doing, Minas Tirith and Rohan together. Because the same thing. If I wander into a shop and I pick up a battle host, I've got an army and I'm ready to go and I'm going to use it. All right? And every time I see the word Rohan, if it's not got an ally with it, I go, sick, you are a noob. Um, because if you're running Rohan without allies on its own, why is it not ready to fair then? So yeah. I just assume that because it's got so many legendary legions now, and even half the good stuff that you can ally with to make it better is a legendary legion. So unless it's Rohan and Minister of together, uh, or Rohan and the Fellowship if you want to go like uh Aragorn slash Boromir slash Gandalf the Grey or something, um, which you know, yeah, they're right. But things like LSR from Minister of or just a solid battle line from Minister if like to then put Rohan in with it as a faction. If you're not doing that and you're just running Rohan, make it right of the fair, then you'll have a much better time. Mm-hmm. Um we've got some chaps coming to join our league for the first line. They're running Rohan Vanilla because that's all they know. Um we have shown them the legend legion and stuff and they've gone out ah, there's a lot more extra rules. We'll leave it for now. <laughs> um which is you know perfectly valid. But yeah, it's um it's just one of them where Rohan good essentially. Uh it's it's good, but it's used by people who lack a bit of experience essentially, so that'll bring it down. Same thing for Minas Tirith. Um on its own, in good hands, it can do really, really well. However, again, if I see vanilla Minas Tirith on a table, nine times out of ten, I'm assuming this is your first or second tournament kind of thing, and you know, your it's it's something that a lot of newer players gravitate towards because of those new battle host boxes, which are awesome, except the Minas Tirith one. It really annoys me because it's got Gandalf the White in it, who is just dog shit. Um, <laughs> and it's like 200 points. So again, I was trying to help some new guys out in the shop this last couple of weeks and we were doing up lists and stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you can just run, you know, run your mortal one against your, your, um, your, your, your Minas Tirith one. I was like, oh, sort of more, what sort of mortal one got? I oh, like, Witch Kings and loads of Orcs, like a few Wild Riders and stuff. Like, that's a pretty solid list. What's your Minas Tirith one got? Oh, Gandalf the White and some Knights of Minas Tirith. Sound. They're good. Um, yeah. May I introduce you to Boromir of the White Tower? I put one in the shop <laughs> just for that reason. Um, the Rangers, they're trash, mate. Um Basically, yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised they made it as high. Um, again, are, I assume are they, only because yeah. if you're using them, you know what you're doing, and you still barely get to 45%. <laughs> um, as a region, I think it's the most disappointing faction in the game. It's so you, cool, it's so cool, and you it's hear so and, you, and you hear Legion, and you go, Cool, I get Azog and Vogue and big scary stuff and bats, and oh, I, I have seven models in my army. Is Azog's Legion is always 10% of Azog's Legion. Azog's Legion is crying out for a 2000 point tournament, 
Like it's just desperate for it. It would be <laughs> awesome. It would be lovely to see. But you see how you see poor Asmos eating. You just go. I killed the big scary thing with no uh, with, with the, the, that doesn't no. have strike. You're wrong. You kill all the little things and it's gone because there's only twenty <laughs> models there. <laughs> then the it's trolls just... run away because like courage two. I think they're actually not. I think they're like courage four or something. But yeah, Stumpy, the troll brute. 105 points of like defense five or six just chod like i've played one or two God. games <laughs> where it doesn't die immediately like because it's so big and scary looking everyone's like well, that's gotta die and then i'll just go oh you know what i'll do even like Feyden runs into it strikes and kills it he's like oh <laughs> sound that was a good troll wasn't it <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it so dearly um, and it was one of my favourite it was a lockdown purchase a little like, passion project I got all the trolls I got all the I got the good and the bad trolls I got Slashy I got Clubby I got Stumpy I got the Ogres I was going to have a lovely time with them one of my favourite games I've ever played two Ogres and like a bunch of other stuff playing against the Shire and ah. we, were, we were playing Hobbit tennis with the ogres and just lobbing things to each other, lobbing hobbits and stuff at each other ogre, knocking them all prone. We're having a lovely time. Um, great fun. But again, they're like D5, man. They just get shot by elves and then they die. Um, it always looks beautiful on the table. And like some genuinely extraordinarily talented artists use this list. Um, shout out Fable Creative, um, Andy Hamlin and Phil Beale. Um, Phil, I think Phil, Phil, Phil Beale at Finale took the most beautiful catapult troll I've, I've, I've ever seen, did one shot Gulivar, also managed to go 0 for 6 over the course of the event. Um, it's really cool, it's really fun. We want it to be good, it just isn't. You've also just reminded me it's missing half its bloody models, too, isn't it? Um, oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, I'll tell you what, it is it's Bolg's Legion, not Azog's Legion, but. If you want it to be semi good, um, but yeah, right. They're the bad stuff. They're the good stuff. This is the bad stuff. Are you in need of assistance? Um, so starting off bad stuff. Well, Fangorn. Yeah, it's trash. It's so bad. <laughs> uh, just so bad. Um, I used okay. to okay. honestly got army a lot, and they're just really bad. If you gave every end five attacks rather than three, would they be good? But may, they'd maybe be better because they might consistently win fights. You'd get to roll more dice. And I think that'd be That's, cool. The The biggest problem with them is you've got Treebeard and you have um, Hard Tree, whatever he's called. Beachbone. Yeah, Hard Tree. Um, they have strike. Not, nothing else does. So you've got like it's the same with eagles, but they're just really slow. So you could just go. It's the same problem with the troll. Was talking about like a, even a fair end can. And I'm gonna like I think a fair end is a bit of a little bitch. To be fair, um, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a bit. Uh, but <laughs> he can can ride into an end, strike up to beat it. And go, bam! You're now dead, and it's not inconsistent. Um, him and you know maybe he takes a friend or two along with him, but yeah, I was playing oh, with yeah. Goblin Town against Ents, and I didn't even put any of the heroes into the Ents. They just killed them with basic bitch goblins because they all just went. I'm going to piercing strike up to strength four. If we lose the fight, oh no, we die. If we win the fight, here's thirty dice. Oh, you're dead. Cool. That was nice. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't know what you do with them. Potentially, you give them something like, um, it can walk over other people's models. Like, ooh, not not land on them, step over them. So you can't just like ends ignore control zones. Yeah, because they don't care. They no, don't care if I think punches it as it's walking past. Oh, that is cool. And then, because what yeah. you do when you play against it is you just surround it with all your models, and they can't move. So you're playing domination or recon or anything like that. You just go bang, you're stuck. 
um and nothing nothing else gets out um but then i i think the fangor being down here is just indicative of monsters in general yeah. um in my opinion i i love monsters i think they're really really cool and it pains me how terrible they are <laughs> because basic trolls like trees even basic eagles they're just not they're just not good like when was the last time someone won an event with like standard mortal trolls in their lists oh or, never you know like it, everyone it, people take guai here but they don't take another en- another eagle like it's just not a thing you know like monsters with might are so good and monsters without might are just a bit garbage Maybe if it had some kind of like brutal power attack but wasn't a power attack but like a power defense, I don't know. Because they just seem to die really easily. But that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Easterlings. Yeah. <laughs> they were always trash. Um, if you if, if you can't afford the Dragon Emperor, here's, here's regular Easterlings for you. <laughs> to be fair, right, Ritabi is actually quite good. And Brogir is actually quite good. And Ritabi and Brogir together are quite, quite good. good. And a fight for Pikewall is still quite good. Apparently it's 44% good. <laughs> no, I reckon that's like 80% good. But only when it's used by Ben Aslan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you're... <laughs> You're using vanilla, right? Like what you see when you think of Easterlings, you think of like maybe it's been chucked in as like yeah you know, something, or you've got like come all on fell beast and amber. That's that's not the way, chief. Um, it's basically. cool. It's not the way. Um, Rangers of Mirkwood. <laughs> I'm, Lit- so, I'm so glad it sucks. Literally, <laughs> my 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 least. I think probably my least favorite list in the entire game because it. It's so it's so bad, and it's never going to win any decent event. It's never going to do it. But it's the ultimate. I'm not going to win the event, but, but I'm going to ruin you. But I'm going to ruin your day. It and, and it, it, it's such an appalling experience. At I... least at least it's in Helm's Deep. Does it suck to play against? Yes. Can it win events? Yes, clearly. But it's just that you get railed by a list that isn't even good. <laughs> This is this is what I said to you like the very first time we met when it got so annoyed that you had a Sultan Helm's Deep and the Kingdom of Casa <laughs> Doom as your evil and good because I was like I had to suffer through losing to your Sultan Helm's Deep and the, the the horribleness of just like walking across a battlefield towards it only if you then go and lose your next game playing with stupid dwarfs you dick <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh, Rangers of Mirkwood uh the most two and two army I've ever seen in my life basically yep. um. They're, they'll win some games and they'll lose some games. If you're good with them, you might win three games and lose one. Um, but you will lose one. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen it win anything. Um, but I'm I'm very grateful that it's not good. Uh, because, again, you're probably okay because you're quite young in the MESBG scene. But the Rangers of Affiliate problem was a, a problem. Um, and that was strength two bows. That was strength two bows, but to be fair, they're like eight nine points each, whereas mm. the range of Merc are like 14, 15 points each, whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah, uh, army of fraud. Um, it's really I good don't... at lower points. It's really it's not it's not good at high points. Stop taking it at high points. That's my theory. Yeah, fine. Um. It's 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 not it's not very maneuverable. Um, if it it, 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 can, it can do things and like a captain or something like something along those lines or like foreigners like a, a couple of the heroes, good. When you start to have multiple captains and just yeah, it you, when you get to the point where you've got a an expensive captain who like a little bitch like fair then can kill. I mean, one turn, then it's, you know, yeah. I like that he's become my status of little bitchness. Um, I, 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 I heroic combated onto a, a, a sort of Erebor captain with, a, I think, gambling a royal guard and an elf and and in, in a game of fog and just killed it. 
Yeah. Um, it's just <laughs> Brawl just doesn't die. Um, but you never want to use his might because and that's the problem. They never use their. You, you just never want to use the might with the army because you need it for things like Thrall and his arc and stone rolls and stuff like that. You just never use their might. You can get a really solid number of dwarfs, and at low points, that's enough. At high points, it's just not. You can you. You 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 just end up end up pinned because you can't if you can't call might to call moves then your opponent is getting position and even if it's even if it's cool and you get to stand your ground you're you're it's so hard to progress in the game um, without spending a limited might so yeah if um, Lee was here it'd be like eighty percent win rate but well no because he was he would he could only win with it at low points this is why yeah. at low points when it was Thrall and a captain and. You have a big old like banner buff off the floor. You got a six banner. You got a bunch of dwarfs. The dwarf battle line is really, really solid and really, really dependable. And at low points, that is enough. At high points, it is not. It's mm-hmm. yeah. We saw at the start most of his data is from high points. They're just yeah, not not enough essentially. Uh, see also Numenor. Um, but like the other way around. Um, it's. It's just big, squishy. Big, it, big it, hero, it, good. D five bad. Like that's that's it. That's all it, it, it it's it's well, it, it, it's fight for straightforward troops. It's fight for straightforward D five troops, which is that that that's not bad. But the heroes are so expensive, you don't get that many of them. If you if if you were able to as a five hundred point event, if you're able to spam out like thirty five to forty of them with a couple of decent heroes. Awesome, but you can't. You need you need an Endil, and he's a ridiculous number of points. He's he's still really really good, but he that if they were D six, if they were D six, it would change it would change a huge amount because it would, it would buy Endil more time to kill an army, which he can do. But they're not. Um, they can get shot. Their battle line can just die. They're limited with the three inch banner if you buy one. The, there's a couple of things I have with Numenor. One of them is the fact that to use it, it's most effective. You'd want Isildur and Elendil at the same time, but if you do that, Isildur is actually not that effective because you can't take the ring. So you have you just kind of stuck taking captains, basically whatever build you go with it. Um, it also why are they both shit? This I don't understand. I think the whole just... thing of Numenor is that it had good bows. Why do their bows suck? It would it would not break them in any way to give them strength three bows, like or or, or strength four. Like just give them all great bows. That'd be fun. Give give Numenor great bows and see what happens. It'd be terrifying. Well, um, well, well, would it? Because then it would, it would force you to think. Like, do you want this to be a you take Isildur and a captain and try and spam troops? But you don't get access to a lender, but you get the great bows, which are damn cool. Or do you or do you go for a lendil and a smaller no, number? You do the first one. Yeah. Yeah. You always do the first one. Um because the sealed or with his ring, just like you can just take take him off his horse, stat, put slip his ring on, and just disappear into the ether and go, ha, you can't touch me. Um and, and not an awful lot is going to kill him. Um and just you know, on solid scenarios, just saving those two points is is so valuable. Um, and also being able to just walk up to other people's heroes and go, "Bonk, you're dead now." Uh, the fellowship, yeah, again, it's it's fun, but it's not good. Uh, if you want to make it semi good, take the breaking of the fellowship at exactly six hundred points, no more, no less. <laughs> um, basically, or is it six six? 50 or something, I don't know. I think, yeah, 600, yeah. Yeah, but still, it's, you know, it's not so good. Um, It's fun to ally stuff into places. Um, Aragorn and Boromir like going into places, anything needs might, so uh, Rivendell Knights, um, Rohan, Vanilla, like that kind of thing. Uh, Gandalf the Grey with blind, like, blinding light magic stuff. He's a good addition to things. Negolas, chuck him into stuff. They're fun little lads to throw in, one or two of them. Um, yeah, the running the fellowship as, as as a whole is just not necessarily a good idea. Uh, Vanilla Isengard. I so want it to be good, and it's one of those things where if you, I find that when there are set scenarios and you know what scenarios you're going for, you can actually plan for it quite well. 
because it has the options available to you. It's got some good. It's got some good three might heroes with some cool rules. It's got a fantastic caster. Even outside of the legion, the bombs can be really good. It's got Crebane. They're great. The problem is if you don't know what you're planning for, and it's just six, and it's just six random games. You can't build a complete list with it. Yeah, um, it's the... it it's just always short somewhere. If you take Saruman, you're short of numbers. And um, that um, if you just if you if you just go troop spam, you're missing on hitter, and your your heroes are fight five. It's another one and... of those things where legend regions within the faction are better than the faction. So if you want to take the scout build, you, you've got two options of good scout lists. If you want to go siege weapon crossbow e build, assault and helm deep is very good. If you want to just spam a pike block, Assault and Helm's Deep is really good at just spamming troops. It upsets me that no one really plays it that way. But, um, at, you know, at low points, at like 400, 500 points, two captains and as many pikemen as you can get would be quite, uh, you know, as a, a huge <laughs> pike block would be quite quite a formidable yeah. force. Um, uh... Wouldn't it, but... 400, 400 points, you get what? Two captains and 28 lads. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, two strength, five D7 captains. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Crabane are really good on uh, the the options of like dropping a Crabane and a Warg Rider and stuff and get some movement. You can do nice things with like Lurts and Vrasku together or something like that at the low points. But like you said, as soon as you go to like the mid area it doesn't really work at high points i think it does quite well um at high points you you, you can do it but but then but again so so there's other stuff and this is what i'd say like if you know what you're trying it's it, it's got some really cool tech plays that you if you if you know what you're going into is a really tough to counter like grimo is phenomenal absolutely phenomenal you if you know Saruman tanks, that's the problem yeah yeah exactly um if you know you're going to be fighting in a condensed area then you're th- if you're if you're running Saruman, Grima, and two three my heroes, that's fantastic. With a Palantir as well, it puts calling heroic moves in, in, for your opponent it, to be a horrible thing to do. That's fantastic. But then if you're not fighting in that condensed area, it just do- it just doesn't work in the same way. It's sad. Um, but also but just, I, the I'm same still... problem with Minister if I'm Rohan. It's in one of those four starter boxes. It gets picked up by new guys quite a lot, and it's. The the Urukai warriors are quite forgiving with new people, but um, it's still being run by new people. Again, I see the Dinner Isengard up against me at a tournament. I think Kuz is probably a newer person. Um, yeah. I'm probably going to have to help him out a bit. Um, Return of the King. See also that. Um, yes. Uh, less so now that it's not in the Pelennor Fields box. But it used to be one of the cheapest ways to get yourself a game, uh, an army that could compete at an event and go kind of two and two fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, again, an iconic thing. Um, really to pick up. Loads of ghosts. The king, Aragorn. You're good to go. Go have fun, kid. Um, it just, I think because it's so ubiquitous, Everyone knows how to deal with it. When I yes. first started playing the game, I found it incredibly overwhelming. I thought this was OP, obnoxious as hell. Like, how do I deal with all this terror things? It just what do you mean it wounds me on my courage? It's wounding me like threes. What's this about? Like, this is a this is stupid. Aragorn, he's got some stupid lightsaber that just cuts for everything I've got. And they're like, oh yeah, but he's D5, you just shoot him and he's dead. All right, cool. Um, like, oh, they've got no might. Okay, yeah, just go, yeah, cool. Like it's just once you work out that you can deal with it really easily, it's eh. yeah. Uh, Baradur, it's... Sauron's really cool. The rest <laughs> but... of the army isn't. <laughs> there is no rest of the army. Yeah. Um, Beefdoms. I think that's a good, my boy. Uh... 38 percent. I don't. <laughs> is it is it is this just because no. Experienced competitive players are playing fiefdoms anymore. Three is or it, four it, years ago, fiefdoms were top five in the game because what they were was a legendary legion before legendary legions existed. And if I said to you now, 
Hey, you know they get um you can have a six inch fearless bubble from one of their heroes. You know you can have a, a six inch reroll ones to wound bubble from one of their heroes. And you know you can have fight five pikes and and fight five cav and a twelve inch banner. And now you're like, eh, okay. Uh, if I how... told you like four three or four years ago, if I told you there was a twelve inch banner somewhere in the game, you'd have gone, holy what? How would you build fiefdoms at 700? Uh, Imre Hill, Forlong, Dwin here. Um, a uh, probably 10 or 12 Black Reveal Arches. Um, I think. Would you go for I'd... some act? Would you go for some uh, action of loss enough to get to get the strength four to, to kill D6 shield force now? Um, maybe now I don't. I know, traditionally, I go clansmen, um, rather than axemen. Um, I I'd really like a clansman with two pikes behind them. Um, okay. the axemen. So interesting. What I tend to do is have kind of uh, two thirds clansmen to one third axemen. Um, it's very much personal preference. I find with people. Um, I I'll, like uh, a couple of mounted knights. Yeah, but only one or two. Any more than that's a trap. They're really cool, but they're 20 points each. Um, and you're like, oh yeah, but they go to 5-5 five, five within 3 inches of Hill. Cool. Cavalry base is 2 inches. Well, slightly less than. But you don't get more than 2 or 3 within 3 inches of Imre Hill. And if you're doing that with Imre Hill, your pikes aren't 5-5. Five, five. So, you know. So I'm, I'm looking at this, and I've got to 656 points. I have 10 warband slots left. And we were at 41 models. Yes. And you got yourself a quite a killy line with a like a really killy line with a flank for banner, pikes, loads of dice, decent shooting. What defense what? is it though? I don't know, like two. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> um it's a large amount of your front line there is gonna be D4. Uh, everything else in the army is gonna be D5. Um it's... It's just not good. But it looks all armory. It looks all armory. <laughs> it, it does <laughs> look like it's all armory, but it doesn't none of it has shields unless you take really expensive Knights to Lamarath on foot, which are like 14 points. They are eleven points. With a shield? They come with shield to standard. Okay, so they're eleven points. But um, they don't do much. But they don't do much. No, but they are fight four, potentially fight five, D6, yeah. shieldy boys. And you take a couple at high points to sit in the middle of what you do with them. Um, you could be starting off fiefdoms now, uh, but you put the you put the knight of the Lamroth on foot into someone here, and then you put like clansmen either side of them and put pikes down the side, and then because the pikes don't have phalanx, um, you shield with the knight of the Lamroth in the middle, and the two pike walls fight, and then if they lose, you can move into space behind the knight of the Lamroth okay. uh, on foot. Um, and what they just act as is like a fight five d six kind of block in the middle, um, that you kind of yeah you sprinkle them in. Um, yeah, I just it just doesn't have um, like it, it's the Dragon Emperor is the same Legion but better, the same list but better. Uh, yeah, oh, you're right, you, no, <laughs> you're, you're 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 getting similar numbers. Um, but it's just that much harder to kill. It's it's e- the fight five bubble is bigger. Um, yeah. It's wounding you. Dragon Emperor's killing you on fives. You're killing it on conditional fives sometimes, but basically sixes. Um, and you don't you don't have the master of battle. <laughs> you get you get to kill a dude or two with shooting beforehand, but no, the Dragon Emperor is better. Yeah, uh, dwarfs. Um, yeah, they're just not good. Um, the same problems as we've talked about before. Yeah. Uh, once upon a time, killing a dwarf was hard. Now it's not. Um, power creep has moved on. Mm. They could really do with some kind of like. Uh, vault warden teams should only be able to be wounded on like ninety six or something. Like the fact that a prowler can go to a vault warden team and wound it on a four or something stupid, is like, it's just not okay, man. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know what you do with them. Um. But Balin's something... Expedition, Legendary Legion, where everything can only be wounded on natural sixes or sixes by sixes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is right. Like... 
<laughs> so moving on um this is kind of a like final like summary situation because we've been talking about this kind of stuff for a while um predictions for the end of the season um we've got a few changes that have happened we mentioned as well as we've gone through so we sort of florian now having to have 50 percent orcs 50 percent goblins kind of situation um someone tried that this weekend didn't they it will see a shift in my opinion back to what it should have probably been, which was like buffs to the magic and the beasts and stuff, and the darkness is there to get you to the fight, not to be used as a shooting tool to destroy things. Uh, as it stands at a 12 inch shooting war, you will lose against most things now, uh, whereas before you could have just about won out. Um, so you have to engage, it just kind of protects you for an extra turn or two while you get there, which once people adapt to that will be good. Uh, but using that and trying to play it the same way you always played it will be tough. Um, it's on Helm's Deep, re rolling ones now instead of re rolling everything. Probably Very how sad. it should have always been. Very sad. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think it'll impact it too heavily, to be honest. It's like a 15% decrease in efficiency or something stupid. Like, yeah, fine. It's just a slap on the wrist. Lake Town and Friends, this is gone. There's like you literally can't do it no more. I mean, um, it, 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 it's, it's Lake Town, one less friend, and a bard. What? Well, if you if you still want to do it, you just use take bard, don't you? Yeah, you take bard and have like ten less models at least. Yeah, you, your your model can't get real low, um, because. But that's that's why everyone takes foreign because right? bard on his own is more expensive than foreign. Then you've got to pay for the kids as well. So, yeah. yeah so. Um. Yeah, and the bears. Um, I didn't realize that they changed it so that it used to be a so heroic defense used to be a six by six. Then they changed it to a six by like so it's just a natural six at the start. Then they changed it back again. Um, that was weird. Yeah, that, that, that was that, just that, a typo in the new rulebook, or what? That 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 completely passed me by. I I was always doing sixes by sixes. If it, yeah, if it, if it, if it, if, it, if it was two dice, I haven't because we had a new guy who came into the game and we're playing with bears and things, and um, for it was like, what's the point of heroic defense? This is the most pointless defense um heroic ever. Um, it just makes it less reliable on the bear save. Uh, you should be able to kill bears now. We will, we will see. How it, that affects I, I don't think it changes how good they actually are. It just means that for newer players playing against them, it feels a little, it feels like you're getting somewhere. Yeah, uh, you'll still lose the game, but you got them down to two wounds, one fate. And you well, actually you... hurt them. Good job. Yeah. Um, I reckon we're going to start looking at something like a Dragon Emperor, Mordor, Harrod kind of meta for a little while. I agree. Um, and there are some very good players who also agree. This um, weekend saw the first GBH 100 since the FAQ. Um, it was won by Mordor Harrod. Second place was Dragon Emperor with two Dragon Knights. And third place was Black Riders. Okay. Interesting. Um, it's a fight five world. Um, do, you, do, you, do you know what's quite good against all of those lists? <laughs> what, that? A sort of Helm's Deep is still good. This is... I, I don't think anyone really disagrees with me, but this is still my, my hill to die on. The only one who better. disagrees with you was start of the ever who started taking Defenders of Helm's Deep instead um, and just cucked yourself for the entire season. <laughs> um, that's the only person who disagrees with you, but It's just... Uh... At, at these higher points levels, when it, they, you, you're sort of only needing to kill 40, 45 models. Three ballistas and a bomb is just so good. It's so good. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't think Correct. I'll make it to 100, but I really, I really hope that other people carry on taking assault and just make Dragon Emperor players cry. Yeah. Someone better like Jay Acharya will use it for you. It's okay. Or Jay Acharya will take some. Bizarre concoction, rather than a Sultan Helm State. Bless him. Um, yeah. A new, a new challenger. A new challenger. Anything? Kalandum. 
Kind of, kind of Castle Doom, half, half, half guard, just killing Black Numenorians. If for a you laugh. want to prove that you're good at the game, Ali <laughs> King, get your Kingdom of Castle Doom warrior list back out and start winning events with that again. Because you made Thedra's guard popular. Now it's I, time to bring back the dwarfs. Because I'll be like, other than other than movement, which I admit is huge, against Dragon em- against Dragon Emperor, fight fight six heroes are so good, are so unbelievably good against the Dragon Emperor. Um and dwarfs have some great ones. You can get you can get like three of them. You can get three really, really choppy fight six heroes uh in a dwarf list with a good number of lads in there as well. I think it's a I think it's a cool way of killing of killing Easterlings. I would love to see it. Please someone do it. Don't win games, but just do it to kill models. If only we knew someone locally with the Dragon Emperor that we could try this against. <laughs> the grudge match to end all grudge matches. <laughs> right. Um thank you for sticking with us. Uh we've yeah, talked for a lot. I'd love to hear your your thoughts and feelings uh, about the kind of current situation going on uh, with the the lists and things. Um, who do you think is going to be good? Who do you think is going to be bad? What needs a nerf? What nerf was too harsh? Talk to us, baby. Um, and we'll see you at the end of the season for a little wrap up in another four months. Much love. Bye. Bye. That's the wrong button. <laughs> That's still the wrong button. There.